You've all seen the thing. It's called Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. What you may not know about it is that all secrets lay within pyramids. We know this. We have been alive and we are old and ugly enough to know that all secrets lay within a pyramid. So one interesting thing about this particular pyramid is it holds the key to helping you get shit done or quit dumb shit. If you're having trouble with either of those things, this will help you get to the root cause of the problem 90% of the time. It really is the most common thing is to go through this like a checklist. So that's what we're going to do today. It's really interesting groundwork and I call it taking care of your Maslow's. So the first physiological need is the one that you would need the most if I was to take it away from you. So if I took this away from you, it would take 100% of your brain power to get it back. You would stop at nothing to get it back. You would be in no position to educate yourself. You would be in no position to build a business, no position to change the way you think in order to quit an addiction. You're not doing that because I took this one thing away. And in two minutes, you're gonna die. Bit longer, but not much. So you already know what it is. It's air, it's oxygen. You need oxygen to live. It's like the number one thing. If you don't have air, you'll do everything you can to get it. There's a lot of breathing techniques out there and they get more and more complicated. There's the 424 and the 478 and all of these things. Here's all you need to know. Focusing on your breath is a very good way to do, uh, reduce anxiety. There's anxiety and there's boredom. They're the only two things that motivate you or hold you back. And it gets way more complicated than that, but obviously they're the main two things that, hold, that either motivate you or hold you back. So to deal with anxiety is a pretty important thing and air is a good way to do it. So it's a breathing technique. All you need to know is that you breathe in through your nose as whatever feels natural. And then you do that again, a second time. That will fill the air sacs within your lungs. That will, that's what you wanna do. And then you hold it for a little bit. And then you let it go for about twice as long as what would feel normal. That's all you need to know. No numbers. You just do the breathe in twice, hold for a bit, and then let it out long. That's it. So you go, you breathe in, then you do it again. Then you hold it. Then you gotta, you just did the joint, just did the bong, just like that, but with air. And then you let it out. That's it. Feels really unnatural when you first do it. Guarantee that it lowers your blood pressure. Test it. If you've got a smartwatch, you can test it. It works. And that is how you physically reduce anxiety. That's all you need to know. Air, done. Water. Uh, most people don't drink enough water. You can drink too much water, but I mean, I think I know of one case of someone dying from drinking too much water. Not even someone I know, just a story that went viral. Um, because it can dilute your blood and whatever, blah, blah, blah. Most people don't drink enough water. I've got a really good trick for this. Uh, so I track my water because I'm a freak. I do 30 day challenges every month, pretty much. So um, if you don't want to be like me, you don't have to track it. But I do have one cool trick. And that is when I wake up in the morning, I really want a coffee. I like my coffee. But I just have one little rule. And this is an idea of chunking. So my rule is I'm not allowed to have a coffee until I drink one 1.5 liter. There, that's from this morning, right? Just one of these. As soon as I drink that, I can have a coffee. And I like coffee in the morning. So guess what the first thing I do is? I scull one of those damn things. And that's a bit hard when you first start, like sculling 1.5 liters. You know, if you don't drink water a lot, it's kind of, it's easier to do smaller sips more frequently throughout the day. And in general, that's what's best to do. But you'll get better and better at it until you can do that. Um, if I do that, I'll find that I actually drink more water throughout the day. Kind of shows how much water you lack generally. Most people do not drink enough water. So then boom, tick it off, done. Water's done. It's just so <laughs> simple, but overlooked. Next one is not so simple, sleep. Um, so a lot of people talk about, you know, Oh, I can sleep five, you know, five hours and I'm fine, whatever, whatever. Seven, eight hours is what most humans need to, to function on a, in a real world, world thing. Sleep has been a big problem for me my entire life. I focus on it a lot. 
to make sure that I get it done. Usually the idea about sleep is that you really need to focus on sleeping while you go to bed. That's what's overlooked. You cannot just go through a TikTok or some shit like that. That will destroy your sleep. That's usually the issue, um, but you can tick it off. Once you get to that, you tick it off. So a lot of people come to me with series of addiction or they just can't get their business built or whatever, and they can't control their behavior and they think I'm all about self-discipline. And then we go through this list and then maybe boom, sleep, how's your sleep? Oh, I'm not sleeping well. And it's like, well, that's it. That's your, that's your 30 day thing. <laughs> Fix your sleep and you'll be good. It's that simple. And then you can keep going if they're good. So, you know, if you just keep going, obviously you need shelter next. This is the thing that would kill you in the quickest way if you didn't do it after that you need warmth you need movement you need outside right you need sun as well um, and you need sex these are the physiological things that you need and unless you take care of them they're going to start motivating you sex is a different one sex is the strongest force in humans it's the strongest desire that we have so it's very important to be able to channel sexual energy into something more important and that's a skill that takes a long time to develop. And if you're in your 20s, I'm not sure that you can do it. I don't know. I didn't do it in my 20s. Um, I didn't redirect it. I just did it. So <laughs> it's it's hard to do. But usually in your coming to, from my experience and what I know about a lot of people that do this kind of thing uh, and get good at it, late 30s, early 40s, you can start to really do this in a, in a, world, in a way that's effective. So if you go through the history books and look at anyone that built something massive, discounting the technology age it's usually people in their 40s that have started to realize they can do that um, to get it done anyway that's physiological let's move forward or we never will next thing is safety now safety for all of our ancestors used to just mean safety from a damn tiger or something right so just something not eating me as long as i'm safe in a cave and i've got an alpha male near me that can fend off and he's got a stick you know this is what safety used to mean now it's we mostly have security if you live in a society that has law and order that'll be the next thing you crave after your physiologicals you're going to want to live somewhere where there's not chaos where there's not anarchy where there's not violence so that's your next thing but if you live in a society that has law and order you're pretty well good you're pretty safe um, and you've got stability next thing you need is freedom of movement generally we have that uh, if you're working in a job you hate just to make ends meet, you might start to feel you're losing that and that can bring in depression and stress and all these kinds of things. But generally, if you are allowed to do what you want to do every day, you have freedom of movement. Now, the next one is the most important. Where are we? The pyramid's over here, right? So the next one, I'm not sure what the second one would have said because a lot of them say different things, but the next one should say connection. Connection is the opposite of addiction. So this is where a lot of work's done. If your physiologicals are good and your safety's all right, connection is usually where you're messing up if you have an addiction. So if you're, let's say you're addicted to heroin. <laughs> I don't know why I laughed, it's so funny. Let's say you're addicted to heroin. You're probably not the life of the party. You're probably not well connected with a huge network. You're probably found somewhere a safe, secure environment where you can just lie on the floor and be on heroin. And you've probably got one or two friends to do the same, right? Or maybe a partner that does it with you or something like that. So you've got that little bit of connection. But generally, that's an addiction that severe is going to mean no connection. And your relationship to other heroin addicts is going to be shallow thin as well. And people with shallow thin relationships, from my experience, from when I was younger, and that's what I saw a lot of, uh, they're the ones that will be like, oh, I die for you, man. You know, I'm always there for you, bro. Like, they're always projecting that they are your, your best mate because they're so not. <laughs> they're so not that they have to overcome it with many more words to convince you that they are great mates and they're there for you. And, they'll, you know, um, people that are really there for you, you know, they don't need to say it because they treat you. You know by the way they treat you. And how you treat others is how they're going to treat you. So connection is really important. And if you have, this is why a lot of people, I'll do a whole thing on alcohol later, but this is the problem with alcohol. A lot of people start drinking alcohol in college, usually around 16, 18, 20 years old. That's when it starts becoming this weekend warrior uh, routine. And then you're hungover through Monday, Tuesday. And as you get older, that'll mean Wednesday, Thursday. But you keep the routine going because your connection to other humans rotates around alcohol. So these are people you would never be friends with usually, but you both drink, so you just hang out. 
And then that becomes your social group because your social thing to do, the way you get connection is through alcohol. And alcohol has imprisoned you to believe that you cannot get social interaction, you cannot get fun, you cannot relax, you cannot, alcohol is a weird one because of culture. It convinces you that you can't get these things unless you poison yourself with more alcohol. And then you only enjoy it on the, on the ride up, which only lasts like 40 minutes actually per drink, but that'll get lost within the night. So you enjoy the night because you drink the whole night. You're still drinking at the end. And then the next day is the come down. And then now you're just useless. <laughs> you're sick and you're living in this perpetual state of sickness forever because you've uh, associated connection to with, connection with humans with alcohol when it's not true it completely brainwashed you so that's anyway we're not here to talk about alcohol uh what we are here to talk about is connection so um i've said a lot of people a lot of pyramids here will say relationships and that's not true because it's not really the relationship that you're after it's the connection so what i mean by that is when you talk with someone else you talk they talk you talk they talk there's a conversation in between you and that's what you're building up the two plus two equals one Two plus two equals one. I said that exactly opposite. The one plus one equals more than two. It's synergy is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Synergetic relationship. So you enjoy the conversation. You each come together because you enjoy the connection, which is conversation. In humans, we have language. That's how we do it. Um, there's also, you know, physical touch and a whole bunch of other ways. But connection in general is language. It's conversation. It's ideas, it's sharing laughter, it's how you make each other feel. Relationship is different. A relationship, so a lot of people think a relationship is the thing between two humans, whatever's in the middle, but it's not. A relationship is just a thought. A relationship is the thought you have about the other person. It's your relationship to them, and then they have a relationship to you. They're, they're completely inter, inter, independent or dependent or interdependent. <laughs> could be any, any of those things. But you can prove this to yourself because you could have a relationship to a dead person. You could have a relationship to a famous person who does not know you. You know, you could have a relationship to a famous person who's dead, <laughs> who does never knew you, right? Um, when very famous people die, a lot of people cry, but this person knew none of them. So relationship is a one-way thought. Connection is what you need. Uh, when I'm talking about connection is the opposite of addiction. And this was a thing proved in a rat park experiment. You know, I won't go on about that. You probably know about that. But basically, if you put rats in a cage by themselves and give them the choice of water or heroin, they will all drink heroin because they're bored. They've got nothing else to do and they have no connection. But if you put them in a society of rats where they can get all of the food, water, connection, sex, everything they want, fun, exercise, everything, none of them will drink the heroin or water because it becomes a social outcast thing and the ones that do uh, become an outcast and lose their connection because they develop an addiction right but if you have the connection you don't have an addiction it's a choice so connection is really important with the quit dumb shit side of things um and the type of, you know, for, for, for relationships, what you really need is acquaintances, friends, close friends, and then your romantic partner or your life partner or whatever. You can mix and choose them how you want to do that, but they're generally the different types. So if you can get connection, like if you're well connected, you'll know because you feel different. You walk different. You're much happier when you're connected to the society that is physically around you or even online, but usually both. Um, you'll know. So then you get to esteem level. And if you're not progressing, you're going to feel like something's missing. You're going to feel lost. You're going to start hating your life experience, which is really just weird. But that's the way that it definitely is. All humans want one thing, and that is progress. Um, so if you're not getting it and you have everything up to esteem level, well, then the thing you're missing is obviously esteem. Now, the way to get esteem is um, there's esteem for yourself and then, you know, there's self-esteem and then there's esteem from others. And unless you have self-esteem, you will not get the esteem from others. Unless you have self-respect, you will not get the respect from others. Unless you don't lo love yourself, you will not get love from others. This is how it works. People take your lead with how you treat yourself. People take your lead with how you treat everything else. People take your lead with how you treat them. 
So if you want more love, you give more love. If you want them to love you, you love yourself and they'll love themselves more. You have self-respect, they'll have self-respect. Everyone looks at each other as an example. We're just all so dependent on each other with how we act. It's real weird. But that's usually the level. So if you are still not at the top of this pyramid and you are still having trouble with quitting dumb shit or getting shit done that you want done and you're not at that next top level and you have everything else, including connection, it's a sting. You're just not believing it yourself. So you have to develop the belief in what you want done before you can do it or before anyone else will help you do it, right? You got to project to the world, this is what I'm doing. This is where I'm going. You coming with me or not, you know? And then everyone will come with you. Everyone will support you in every single way you can. Whatever you say, I'm going to go do this. Everyone will support you to do it. It's just the way the universe works. I don't know. It's the way humanity works. And then you get to the top, which is self-actualization. Uh, this is basically the ability to act. So it becomes where we move out of just spreading our genes into starting to spread memes, starting to get things done. And it's, it's a desire to become everything that you are able to become, everything you are capable of. So not only can you now come up with an idea and a plan and goal, but you can go and do it, right? That's the ability to act and create. That is the definition of power. And this Maslow's hierarchy of needs, whether he knows it or not, created the pyramid that in which lays the secret to getting shit done and quitting dumb shit. 